Hello, YouTube. I'm back. Welcome to Dumb Money. I think I'm almost over the jet lag, and now I'm in a car headed to a meeting. Maybe I'm not over the jet lag. All the big stuff goes down when you're out of town. So we were at Startup Week, obviously, right? And we're at an after party, and our friend Jason Story, who's also a venture investor, who has never referred us to a good startup company. And I was just actually ripping on him about that. <laughs> and he actually made an amazing referral. It's been almost eight years since we sold the car list. All right, well, that was our car dealer tech software company. We've been doing this for eight years. That's unbelievable. Well, not exactly just this, but. At the time we thought, okay, we have such a great wealth of experience in the automotive space. We're probably gonna end up investing and advising other car dealer technology startups and we haven't today i think this is the one we've been waiting for because we know so much about this industry that we always talk ourselves out of investing in these companies because they're just never good enough eCarList was a software platform that helped car dealers initially list their cars eCarList. this was 10 years ago before the internet was the place you go to shop for cars. Car dealers have spent a tremendous amount of time separately listing their cars on all these sites. And yep. this software that was originally created by Jordan and Lynn, and we joined them shortly after, the big part yep. was True Target, which was a software that you know, Jordan developed the bulk of. It allowed you to price vehicles in real time based on what other cars in the market were selling for that were similar in nature. It was amazing revolutionary information at the <laughs> for time. Car for, for car, car dealers. For car dealers. All right, we, we synthesized big data to help car dealers price cars more accurately. That's what it did. Yeah. Um, and we also then managed the dealer websites. That's I came in to start up the website division. There were not a lot of companies doing car dealer websites. Now that's a huge industry. It was not a sexy industry. It was not a sexy <laughs> industry at all. But Dave grew it from zero to what, 1,200 sites in a couple of years? I think we had 2,000 okay. within two years and then we sold the company. And that was kind of our first big sale of a company that our group, me, Dave, uh, Jordan, and Lynn, who you guys have met in previous episodes, owned entirely. So that, that was a big opportunity for us. And that's what has really enabled us to do what we do today, which is not having a day job and investing in companies and in mentoring companies full time. We're Dumb Money. If you haven't yet subscribed, we'd love to have you hit that subscribe button, ring the bell, make sure you get notifications. I think you know that by now. It's just a requirement. Please do leave us comments. We sincerely try to respond to every single one. Last night you were telling me about this new company, Molo Car, Molo to Car, be which renamed. We'll, we'll, never, we'll never use the word Molo Car after today. <laughs> Car dealers have a huge issue right now. I'm losing uh, cars and losing keys. A lot of dealerships spend anywhere between three and six thousand dollars a month buying new keys for customers for key fobs that they've lost. This company essentially took the tile technology. You know those tiles yeah. that if you have a lost wallet, and they created an enter an enterprise version of tile for car dealerships. They're essentially a technology platform and an app that lets you track down every key and every vehicle on a dealership's lot. And they're right here out of Dallas. And then this is gonna be one of those opportunities where we're not just investing, we're gonna help these guys for the next two, three years, essentially take their product national. Are you telling me I have to have a day job again? We've already, we've already met with them multiple times while you were out doing whatever you do. And, I know, I, I kept and, getting ah. calendar requests and they were at weird times. So yeah. It was a 17 hour time difference and I wanted to dial in, but I, I was just not you awake were, You were having them. fun and we were working. Okay, but this meeting today is for you, you to get to uh, meet the group and learn firsthand about okay. this company. And then we'll have lunch. We always have lunch. And we'll talk about all the other things that you missed. <laughs> How much did I miss? I was only gone for three weeks, but it seems like I missed 20 deals, but that's kind of our pace, right? Well, it's certainly me and Jordan's pace. I, I, don't, know, I don't know what it was, but when you were out of town, we were really productive. It was supposed to be sunny today. Time for a meeting, time to turn off the camera. I think we need to catch up Dave on everything he's missed while he was partying and the other side of the world. Is there a barbecue right here? <laughs> <laughs> Jerry calls. I'm glad we were there because they were planning on doing this weird channel partnership with this company that sells like insurance to car dealerships. And they were planning on paying this company the full commission, sales commission, and they were that was gonna be their sales force. I was like, no, 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 no. You can't you can't start an automotive SaaS 
company to dealerships and then have a, a random bunch of outsiders selling it. We talked them out of it and I was like, listen, you can have channel partnerships for sales, but they are only door openers and they get a very small piece of the sales commission and they're working hand in hand with an inside sales rep that actually has to communicate the product. They need to just get focused on the key fob part. They need to be the, we solve one problem and one problem only. There's a horse? You, look at this. Yeah, there's a horse. A real horse? Even as much as we complain about every time they show anything having to do with Dallas, Texas being like all horses and stuff, we're gonna be guilty of it too. It's amazing. The only thing that concerns me, they have to raise enough money to get a big sales team or else this thing doesn't make any sense at all. It'll get ripped off way too fast. Yeah. Well, that's, well, that's, right. that's what we're for. Yeah. We're, <laughs> we're here to fund the operation. <laughs> that's where you come in, Jordan. Oh, yeah. that's <laughs> Are they going to go back internally and be like, oh, we don't want to give that much of the company. We don't want to. No, no, you know. no. They, 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 know, they know they need to raise yeah. two million. So if they come back and say, no, we're only going to raise half a million, I'm out. No, yeah, agreed. Yeah, but I really like this one. Let's you missed startup week, startup week, you missed epic office hours, and you yes. missed a pitch competition. There's a sprinkler company that he likes because he's obsessed with sprinklers. I met with a VR company mm -hmm. that does like training for police forces. Yeah. I have another we police tech that company that's in Dallas. It's a scheduling app for off-duty police officers. But There's this guy that makes, uh, for the military, these condensers that create water out of air. That's kind of awesome. Yeah. I guess this is your first day meeting with Molo car. What, what do you think? The concept is so simple that to me, that's the kind of thing that's easier to sell. And it's something that every car dealer with more than 150 cars absolutely needs. This will be our biggest investment, our new biggest investment, for sure. I'm excited, how about you? My biggest problem is I want to go bigger. I want a bigger chunk of this company because I know how successful it's going to be. I found a trade but I was just really busy and I didn't do a trade board because I was like, I'll do a trade board in a few weeks on this deal because this stock's not going to move now. And it moved. <laughs> it moved so much. Jeffree Star is the largest YouTuber cosmetics review person on the internet. Jeffree reviewed this, this putty primer by Elf Cosmetics. Elf Cosmetics is like the discount cosmetics company. They sell them in Walgreens and Target and Walmart. I like to take a really affordable drugstore product, which today that will be the Elf Poreless Putty Primer. And then we're gonna take the luxury item, which is the Tatcha, the Silk Canvas. But how is it gonna work against the Elf Primer? Girl, we're about to see right now. And Jeffrey said that this putty primer by Elf is as good as the stuff that costs 10 times as much. Overnight, it became an internet like sellout. Yep. You can't buy it anywhere. I obviously invested in Elf. The stock is up 40% in like the two weeks since I invested. We need to interview our good buddy Terrence's daughters who are like nine and 11 years old. Yep. Evidently, they know everything about this Jeffree Star. I just wanna to talk to them to get their input on how big is this? Because I'm seeing national sellouts. I'm seeing buzz on Twitter that is just crazy. But how much of that is now already in the stock that it's up 40%? And I also want to go to Target to actually see the product in person. Earnings are coming up in a few weeks, so I have to decide, do I take profits in my Elf Cosmetics trade or do I stay in through earnings? Dude, that cornbread is good. I didn't eat uh, that is so good. the rest of that. He has one little corner yeah. left of it. Well, that's what you get for being slow. <laughs> It's also a uh, Walgreens. So do you think the popularity of the putty primer has increased demand and consumer sales of the other elf products or no? Yes, it is. It is. Because I've been getting a lot of people asking, well, do you have this? Do you have this? Awesome. So I think when the primer came out, that's when a lot of people were like, oh, you have elf. Oh, I heard you had elf. Or do you have elf? So, yeah. So, did you see the Jeffree Star video? I did not. But you heard about it. I heard about it because everybody keeps coming in asking for it. <laughs> so, yeah, I hear about it a lot. So, I get consumers asking about it coming in Walgreens probably about twice or three times a day. And I'm here five days a week. I'm buying more Elf right now. Jordan is too. Jordan, 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 Jordan. I, I, the He's ask trying to get his order before mine. No, it's already, my order's already in. Popularity-wise, how's it rank? Oh, this is probably one of the number one ones. Really? Yes, because people come in, they ask for this all the time. Just got to my good friend Terrence's house. Hi. 
Hi. What's up? Hi. There, there's my research panel. I'm Gabrielle. I'm Tylee. After that video, do you? How did that change your perception of the Elf brand? I've always kind of used Elf, but it's different when someone who you look up to in the beauty section and they're, you know, using something that's on a cheaper scale and they're saying it's this amazing thing and then you want to go try more of their product. I follow what he says. I think it's definitely a bigger deal and I've kind of caught on to that. I have a giant drawer of makeup and half of my products are probably, probably the majority of it is ill. Yeah. Thank you guys. This is Thank awesome. You. Thank, Thank you. you very much. You've Thank been you. very helpful. Thank you. You've been very helpful. I'm pretty sure I'm not only going to keep my trade in through earnings on elf but i'm actually going to up my position make sure to check out the trade board on elf cosmetics um you may find this a little shocking i think that the elf poreless primer is jeffree star approved for the price bitch you can't beat what happened today in full rain humidity it was a rough one and it actually looks pretty good